Hello, my name is Kareem. I'm the coder behind Grasshold, and today I'm just going to go over some of the settings in the user preferences um, because they are quite a lot. So first, gonna find it under Add-ons, Grasshold. So there are three categories: there are the default settings, the auto name settings, and the UI settings. Um, and so the defaults, by default, um, materials are linked for each species. So if we add, um, what's simple? If we add cre some creeping bent grass, and then we add, we copy that system, or we add another system, and we also select creeping bent grass. And let's change the seed so that they don't overlap. If we change what settings we change in the materials of one, are automatically changed in the material of the other. So the materials are linked. If you change this, then the next scene that you start will by default have linked, will have unique materials. Okay. Um, if you want to change it for this particular scene, that setting is under overall settings um, right here. And then on an individual basis, you can, of course, unlink the material right here. Um, Sorry if this doesn't look like yours. This is the default. So by default, it's unique material. If you change the setting to, uh, if you select the setting, then for your next new scene, um, by default, it'll be it'll be unique by default instead of shared. Um, yeah. So that's this first setting. The second setting is link imports. So by default, Grasswald will append all these models, all these materials into your scene as you need them. But if you're only working on the scene locally um, and you're not going to share it with anyone else, it's just here on your hard drive, then you can set it to link. And instead of, then, instead of uh, appending them, it'll just link them into your scene. That way you save file space. Uh, your, your file sizes are a lot smaller. Um, but, of course, there's the downside that you can't then later share these um, without going through a great deal of trouble. Of course, if you've already started a scene, then you'll have to go down to the overall settings and change that here. Um, so that's those two settings. Um, other settings we have, there are the default views. So you have the option of making the selected object your emitter by default when you add a new system, or to have no emitter. So if we set it to no emitter, then you add a system. There's no emitter until you select the object you want it to be emitted from. So then you can just select it, Icosphere. Now, of course, you can always change this afterwards, move it to the cube, move it to the Icosphere, you know, no problems. But whether you want to, by default, use the selected object or none, I prefer selected, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, then the next setting is the default uh, filter method. So do you want this list over here to show global or local systems? So if we add a particle system on this cube and we go to local, then only the ones on this cube are shown. And then you switch here and only this one is shown. Now, the wh whether it, by default it starts in global or local, that's basically what this setting is saying. Then the last thing, and this is at least the last one in the defaults, and this is really useful for uh, people with slower computers, um, like me, is to decrease the draw method. So this is the drawing method of newly imported systems. What do I mean by this? So if you switch it to bounds, okay, and I'm going to, uh, let's just delete these, add ourselves a new cube, um, global, say delete. Okay, you add a new system. You can see by default it is now displaying them in bounds. So if I switch it to, um, you know, these leaves, well, then we have to, you have to manually change it. Hmm. Well, you have to refresh it. So that's a bug. I'll fix that. But, um, yeah. So that should change this. Then the other settings for auto name, 
these are a bit interesting. So what should be taken into account when the system is using the auto name? So right here. So right now, by default, auto name is the emitter, then the species, then the variant, separated by uh, a dash. Now you can change this so that you don't you don't want to see the emitter. Let's say okay, auto name. Now the emitter is no longer taken into account. Same thing with species and variant. Um, but you know you at least want one of them. So and then if you want to change the delimiter because you know preference or something, um, that's also doable. Um, so yeah. That's those, and now for the UI, um, this is what I have, at least for me. Um, I prefer, not the default UI, but a uh, condensed one, because um, I already know what these are, what these do. Um, but, you know, clean is a bit more uh, wordy if you want it, you know, slightly cleaner than the original, um, but you don't want too much uh, thing. So the only actual things that that changes is just this here and under the distribution how the paint looks. So if you change this to clean or condensed, um, you just there's drop downs and there's a paint for each one on its own and that's the unlink. Um, so they work just as before. The only difference is it's a little uh, cleaner, at least in my opinion, which is why I have that set. And this last or then there's two more. There's auto select system, um, which what does that do? Select the last system, unselect the object whenever active object is changed in view. Okay, so if I switch, you see, if I switch from this object to this object, you can tell that the selected object is or the system is changing, or Wait, no, sorry. <laughs> I duplicated the object, so I have to actually make a difference. So, there. Now when I switch objects, the selected um, system is changing. Uh, if you don't want your selected system to change based on, you know, when you change the object you're selecting, if you don't want this behavior, uh, unselect the auto-select system, and then the currently selected system will stay the same whether or not you change objects. I like this. It's a bit more intuitive. So I'm going to keep that. Um, and then what are the persistent vertex tools? So under the tools panel, there's another Grasswald tab called uh, Grasswald vertex tools. It's basically just the paint and a system selector. So that if you are, if you've started painting, right, uh, and you want to be able to switch systems, bam, then you can start painting that object. And you can switch back and forth. This way you can paint all your objects all at once. And then you can finish, and bam. It's just so that you can speed up your workflow a bit. Um, and then the last one, uh, yes, this last one, the enable package manager. This is for um, if you want to start adding your own packages into Grasswald, then that's what this package manager is for. I have it disabled by default because it can be confusing, you know, when you have no systems. So, oops. Back to object mode. When you have no systems, and then you suddenly just see this package manager install new package, and you're like, oh no, um, where are my packages? But don't, don't worry, they're all there. These are the loaded ones, grass, weeds, moss, and debris. Those are the built-in ones. Low poly, that's another one that I just made on the side um, for the tutorial on how to actually make your own packages for things, so wait for that coming soon. Um, but yeah, so you can install your own packages, you know, that'll be in, in a later tutorial. Uninstall packages, so if you want to get rid of them. But, uh, yeah. And then, of course, packages, you can tell. Oops. Um, you know, th that's what these are, right? If you've got the all, which sh shows everything. You've got debris, moss, weeds, and grass. The one that I'm tickering with, which is, uh, I've called it low poly. Just because something simple to, to make. But, um, yeah. So, those are the user preferences. Um, I guess, you know, while we're already here, we can go over some of the, some of the more in-depth settings, or, no, I'll do that in another tutorial, so, um, you know, I'll see you next time.